Um, story time about how this boy stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So a little background information. I was six years old and in kindergarten, obviously. I'm not gonna lie. This story kind of shows that it doesn't matter how old a child is. They can literally still be very mean and yeah. Well, during the middle of the school year, there was this new kid who came to our class and his name was Freddie. Now, Freddie coming in in the middle of the year was kind of sad because everybody already had their friends. They didn't really want to talk to the new kid. And what made it even worse is was the fact that he was a teacher's pet and he was the teacher's favorite. So he was always picked to go up to the board and be the line leader, which made the kids hate him even more. For example, during lunch, Freddie would go and try to sit with some of the kids and they would call the teacher over, say that he was doing something that was annoying them or really gross. And the teachers would remove him and put him at a table alone by himself. And I was one of the kids that didn't really make fun of him. I just kind of sat back and laughed, which I know is terrible. But like for part two. Part two about this boy who stabbed me with a pencil in kindergarten. So like I said, everybody would pretty much bully him and I was one of the kids that just sat back and laughed, didn't say anything to him directly. Eventually we were getting in trouble for discluding him. We would all have to stay inside during recess with our heads down on the desk in the dark. So then everybody act like they were gonna include him. Like the one time they were like, okay, we're playing hide and seek, you know, you go hide. And then they never went to find him. So then this kid actually started getting violent. My guess is because the teachers and principal were not doing anything about it. When everybody was walking, he would purposely trip kids. This one time, this girl brought in pencils for the whole class, and she didn't give him one. So he said that he felt sick the one day, and all the kids went out to recess. And he went around and broke every single pencil. And I came in and I found it, so I told the teacher. And then during nap time, he put his mat by me. And when I finally fall asleep, he literally comes over and stabs me in the back of the neck with a pencil. Story time about why I hate Valentine's Day. So a little background information. I was 22 years old, and I had been dating this guy for almost a year. And we're going to call him Jimmy. Most of Jimmy and I's relationship had been long distance. Because literally after two months of us dating, he was offered a job in a different state. And I never worried about him cheating on me or anything like that because he seemed like a really honest and genuine guy. But of course I was wrong because he said that he couldn't do anything for Valentine's Day because he had to work. So me, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to fly to him, you know, so we can spend Valentine's Day together. And it'll be a nice surprise. So a few days before Valentine's Day, I get my plane ticket and I wanted to do something special. So I wore some nice lingerie under a trench coat. Well, fast forward, my plane lands and I get an Uber to his apartment. And when I knock on his door, I hear a woman's voice from inside saying, don't worry, I'll get the door. Like for part two. Part two about why I hate Valentine's Day. So like I said, I Uber to his apartment and I knock on the door and I hear some woman from inside say, don't worry, babe, I'll get it. So I hurry up and try to tie my coat because I had untied it thinking that my boyfriend was going to open the door. But no, why would my boyfriend open his own door to his own apartment that he lives alone in? So she opens the door and she's like, hi, what can I help you with? And I'm like, oh, is this apartment blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, is Jimmy here? And she was like, yeah. So she calls Jimmy over to the door. I look directly at him and I'm like, oh, is this like your friend or something? And she's like, excuse me, I'm his fiance. So I'm looking at him all confused and I start screaming that he's a liar, a cheater. He's like, babe, go call the police. I have no idea who this woman is. She sounds crazy. So his fiance walks away and he goes, I'm sorry, I'll call you later. And then security escorts me off the property. Needless to say, I never talk to him ever again. Story time about how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I mean my literal pet cat got me grounded. So a little background information. I was 16 and I was a freshman in high school and my parents were extremely strict. Now, of course, there was the usual no hanging out with boys, no hanging out with anybody on the weekdays. Well, my parents took it a step further. Actually, no, they took it like 10 miles further. I got my phone taken every night at six o'clock even on the weekends, and my friends were only allowed to come over for eight hours exactly on the weekends. And they had to have a ride to and from my house. Well, usually my friend group and I were never invited to any kind of parties, but this one girl who had just moved to our school, she was throwing a huge party and she invited everybody, not just the popular kids. So obviously my friends begged me to go. They were like, please, like we can sneak over there. Your parents go to bed early anyways. Like for part two. Part two about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. 
So like I said, my best friends are begging me to come out of the house. They're like, listen, like do whatever you have to to come to this party. This is the first and probably only party that we will ever be invited to in our entire lives. So at this point, I start planning to sneak out of my house. So my parents usually go to sleep at around 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, and they usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning. But since this party was on a Friday, obviously my parents aren't going to wake up at that time. They'll usually wake up around like maybe 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So this gave me a perfect amount of time to do what I needed to do, come back and not get caught. But just in case, I made sure to turn off any alarms on their phone. But I also had to make sure that I had a foolproof plan to get out of the house and get back in. Now, of course, I couldn't go through any of the doors in the house because of the stupid ring doorbell. But there was one thing that did work in my favor. So my dad had been slowly but surely installing the window security alarms. But he hadn't made it to my room yet, so I was good to sneak out of my window. And thankfully, my window was on the first floor. Like for part three. Part three about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, I had a foolproof plan to escape, okay? I was going to get out the window, and I was going to just crawl back in and act like nothing ever happened. But there was an issue with this, okay? My dad was supposed to fix my window because I somehow broke it. I don't even know how. But anytime that I go to put my window up, it just literally falls. And not only does it fall, it locks when it falls. And obviously, you can guess what will happen if it does fall. I won't be able to get back in the house, and I will somehow have to get in the house without my parents knowing, which is literally impossible. So I will be grounded for the rest of my life. So I was going to put a book between the window and the windowsill, but I didn't want it falling and making a lot of noise. So I decided to put a pillow there. So I stuck out of my house at 11 o'clock and I had the best time of my life, probably because that's the first and only time that I will ever be invited to any party. But fast forward, I go and I run to the side of the house to get into my window. And of course, the pillow is missing. And I'm looking around to see where the pillow went in my room. And of course, my cat is laying on it on the floor. So I tried messing with the window. And then all of a sudden, my parents walked in my room and saw me. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what, but coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. Especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him. Meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24-7. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries. He was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag. Because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me if you don't Story time about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So a little background information, I was 18 and it was the summer before my freshman year in college. And it was towards the end of the summer, so I decided that I wanted to take a vacation with a few of my girlfriends before we all went off to the different colleges that we were going to. And I have a lot of pets. I have four hamsters, two snakes, a tarantula, two birds, and one fish. So I asked her if she could watch all of them. She said yeah, so I wrote her out a schedule of when they need to be fed. And I wasn't even going to be gone a week, so it would be pretty easy because I already cleaned all their tanks and everything like that. And I wasn't worried at all because I trusted my sister. She had two dogs and a cat, so I thought she was going to be fine. I called her the first two days. Everything seemed to be going well. And I called her on the fourth day, and she didn't answer the phone. So I called my mom, asked her if she could get a hold of her. And my mom said that she spent the two days at her boyfriend's house, like for part two. 
Part two about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So like I said, I called my mom asking if she could get a hold of her and she said that she spent the last two days at her boyfriend's house. And the worst part was my sister was the only one with a key to my apartment. So my sister calls me the next day and she's like, hey, sorry, like I was at my boyfriend's house. And I was like, who fed the animals? And she was like, well, I just put enough in their cages so that way they would be fine for like three days. And she was like, don't worry, I'll sleep over there tonight to make sure they're okay. So I'm like having a fucking panic attack right now. Anyways, so fast forward, I get home early in the morning and my sister's sleeping on the couch, but my sister brought over her animals too. So I wake my sister up and I'm like, hey, like, how are all the animals? She's like, oh, they're fine. And then we walk into the kitchen and the fucking bird cage is open and my birds are missing and her cats are nowhere to be found. So now I'm freaking the fuck out. So then I go to check on the rest of my animals, life for part three. Part three about why I will never let my sister pet sit for me ever again. So like I said, we walk into the kitchen and the bird cage is open and my birds are nowhere to be found and neither is her cat. So at that point, I run to check on all of my other animals. Thankfully, the snakes were fine. So I go to check on my tarantula and he's missing. So now I grabbed my sister's dogs, locked them in my room, and I went to go check on my hamsters. Um, yeah, she forgot to feed them the whole week because one of them ate the other one. So at this point, I'm having like a mental fucking breakdown and I'm moving all the furniture in the living room and everything like that. And we lift up the couch and we see her cat bolt out from under the couch. After that, I look under the couch and my bird is literally torn into pieces under the fucking couch. A few days later, she texted me and she was like, hey, like, I feel so bad. Like, let me buy you a new bird and a new tarantula. And to this day, two years later, I still don't know what happened to them. Story time about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. So a little background information. I was 13 years old and in seventh grade. And I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex who were twins and they were both four years older than me. Whenever I was three, my dad left my mom for his dentist and we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now, because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family, especially because the guys that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally, my mom met this guy who's really nice and she decided that she was going to get married to him, but he despised my older brothers. Mainly because before he moved in with us, my mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy, who we're going to call Jerry, got into a fight. Like for part two. Part two about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, my mom and Jerry got into this one fight. And it's a super long story, but pretty much all it made Jerry realize was that he did not have authority over my mother. And she didn't have to depend on him for anything because my brothers would always be there for her. Now, Alex was more of the shy one. Meanwhile, Josh was super hot-headed and didn't deal with anybody's bullshit. And fast forward, my mom and Jerry move in together. That's when we realized that Jerry was super abusive. And Jerry knew that he could pick on Alex whenever he wanted because he wasn't going to do shit. And most of the time, Josh wasn't home because he literally hated Jerry. The one time Alex came home and he did really bad on this one test. And Jerry was like, oh, he needs to learn discipline, blah, blah, blah. The next day, we all were sitting down for breakfast and we saw Alex come downstairs with a black eye. And that's whenever Josh flipped the fuck out. He grabbed Jerry, ripped him across the fucking table, and threatened him with a kitchen knife. And my mom called the cops, like for part three. Part three about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, he said he needed to teach some discipline. So he literally beat the shit out of Alex. And we all didn't know until he came downstairs the one morning for breakfast. And that's whenever Josh flipped the hell out. He threatened Jerry with a knife. After that, my mom called the cops. I didn't really do anything but try to de-escalate the situation. But after that, Jerry called a family meeting down to the kitchen table. And he was like, I will not deal with this level of disrespect in this house. He was like, you need to choose between me or them. She was like, well, I'm not going to choose between you or my kids. And he was like, well, then you need to choose them leaving the house. They're about to be 18. They can leave and get their own place. So my mom ended up choosing Jerry because Jerry had a lot of money. And my brothers weren't really that mad about it because it got them out of the house. And my mom would send them a lot of money every month. And Jerry never knew about it. But now instead of him being abusive towards my brothers, he's way more abusive towards my mom. Story time about why you should stay away from guys who just got out of a long-term relationship. So a little background information. I was 14 and I was in high school. 
And I had just moved from a normal high school to a special education unit where there was only about 60 to 90 kids. And I met this guy named Robert, and he was supposedly the most popular guy in school. He was a grade above me, and he was super hot. He definitely had a reputation with the girls, and his body count was higher than his age. Well, I have a single stay-at-home mom, and her and I haven't had the best relationship, and she's kind of strict, but also kind of not. Like, for example, sis will let me get my belly button and my tongue pierced, but will not let me hang out with boys. Does that make sense? Absolutely not, but here we are. Well, somehow Robert and I started talking, and then we started dating, and everything was going super good. I was seeing him every day, spending every single hour that I possibly could with him, until I came home one day with a hickey on my neck, like for part two. Part two about why you should stay away from a guy who has just gotten out of a long-term relationship. So like I said, him and I started dating, and the one day I came home with a hickey on my neck. I didn't sleep with him, but him and I were fooling around. But my mom went psychotic. She grounded me. I wasn't allowed to see or speak to Robert ever again. Which was stupid because I'm a 14-year-old girl who's in love with a boy. I'm definitely going to find a way to talk to him. So now this led to me thinking that he was going to get bored and not want to be with me anymore. So finally, two months later, my mom is letting up and she let me go out with my friend Lauren. But we ended up just going to Lauren's house so that way Robert could come and see me. And I think I forgot to mention a few red flags. All of my friends told me that Robert had an ex-girlfriend of four years that he was absolutely in love with. But that wasn't the worst one. He told me that he was never going to get over his ex and that he was always going to want to be with her. And then he asked me to be his girlfriend two days later. And we're going to call her Lucy. Well, I posted a few TikToks and Lucy's best friend Ellie commented on my TikToks. Like for part three. Part three about why you should stay away from guys who had just gotten out of a long-term relationship. Like I said, I posted some TikToks of Robert and I, and Lucy's best friend Ellie decided to comment. Ellie commented something along the lines of, look at Robert finally getting some attention. And Lucy, which is his ex-girlfriend, commented, he can finally leave me alone now. So I screenshotted it and I showed it to Robert and he was like, oh, just forget about it. It was nothing. Block them. But instead of that, I decided to be petty and I posted another TikTok saying, look at Robert finally getting some attention. Five minutes later, Ellie Snapchatted me and she was like, I don't know why you're doing that. Like, I just commented that because he was literally just texting Lucy on Christmas. Saying that he misses her and he would do anything to get back together with her. So I screenshot it and I show it to Robert and he doesn't say anything. He literally just straight up ignores me. So obviously we broke up. He got a new girlfriend and she would literally call me every name under the sun. So I gave her a little reminder that he's never going to get over Lucy. And I started dating Robert's best friend and he is so loyal and I love him so much. Story time about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So a little background information. I was 14 years old and had just started my freshman year of high school. And my brother and his girlfriend were both seniors. And we're going to call his girlfriend Riley. Now, Riley and my brother started dating in the middle of the summer. And you would think since they just started dating and basically just met each other, that I wouldn't know her that well. But literally two days after they started dating, she started spending every single day at my house. I'm being serious. Like she had a whole duffel bag that had basically her closet in it. But that wasn't the problem. So in the summertime, my parents would plan a lot of family activities. And since they were called family activities, his girlfriend wasn't allowed to go. I mean, I think she would have been allowed to go, but she was also really disrespectful to my mom. So after one of our family days, my parents asked my brother if Riley would be joining us for dinner. And he just ignored them and went up to his room. And my room's right next to his so I could hear everything. And Riley called him like for part two. Part two about why I hate my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, my room was right next to my brother so I could literally hear everything. And I guess Riley called him and she was complaining about me. She was like, she's the reason why your mom doesn't like me. I feel like she's jealous of me. She doesn't want us to be together. Which was really weird because I didn't give a fuck about what my brother did. So fast forward, school finally starts. And Riley lived about 20 minutes away from us. So my brother told her that he couldn't go and pick her up for school every day. But obviously I would ride to school with him because we lived together. Anyways, eventually she had a problem with that too. So my brother and I had to start leaving 30 minutes early to get to school so we could pick her up. So the first time that we pick her up, we pull up to her house. And obviously I'm in the front seat. And she's just standing there. So my brother rolls down the window and he's like, get in the fucking car. We're going to be late. And then she literally has the audacity to start arguing with my brother in front of me about why she should get the front seat instead of me. Like for part three. Part three about why I hated my brother's girlfriend. So like I said, once she got in, she started screaming about how she should get the front seat instead of me. So I turn around and I'm like, last time I checked, you've only been here for two months. Stay in your fucking lane. 
And then she starts crying because she's like, oh my god, your sister's so mean to me. Like, I just feel like I should have more respect as his girlfriend. So fast forward to the weekend, my mom said that she needs to have a talk with me. And she's like, honey, I know you may not like your brother's girlfriend, but you have to stop being mean to her. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've only had one conversation with her in the last week. And that was to tell her to stay in her fucking lane. And then I told her about everything going on. So she calls my brother down to ask him if it's true. And my brother was pretty pissed off at me, but he wouldn't lie. So my mom said that she was not allowed over the house anymore. And that he wasn't allowed to go pick her up from school until I got my license. So that just caused more problems between her and my brother, so he broke up with her. And then she started spreading rumors that she broke up with him because there was something weird going on between him and I. Story time, I'm in a long distance relationship and I don't know if I should break up with this boy or not. So a little background information, him and I were best friends for almost a month before we started dating. And literally as soon as we started dating, he started asking me for nudes. And I would be like, no, not tonight, I'm tired. And then he would keep asking me why. And then he would start to make me feel guilty about not wanting to send him nudes. Eventually, he would just say, it's fine, I'll just wait until we can do physical things together. And he still has, quote, his hose on Snapchat. And he still has all of their nudes and everything. And literally the day before we started dating, he told me that he liked this one girl. And he'll always hang up the phone to talk to her instead of me. And then when I bring it up, he tries to say that he's... So obviously I try and bring this up to him. And he tries to make me feel bad by saying that he thinks about unaliving himself. He also has a few other red flags. Like for part two. Story time. I'm in a long distance relationship with this boy and I don't know if I should break up with him or not. So like I said, he says he always thinks about unaliving himself. So obviously I feel bad for him and I just love him so much that I can't let him go. And he has a bunch of other red flags. Like, he'll tell people he's 13 and other people he's 14 and, you know, he apparently didn't know his birthday. Well, fast forward, he's been texting me more and when I told him I loved him, he left me on open, which he never does. He always says it back to me. We still haven't really been talking on the phone, but I did send him pictures. Not fully nude, but both times I sent those, he literally called me right after. But other than that, he will never call me. Story time about how my crazy ass cousin broke up my family. So a little background information. My cousin Brandy has been married to her wife for about 16 years. And they both have three kids together. And I live with my brother and sister-in-law, Nora. Both of our families were super close. They were always coming over to our house, vice versa. Now this is where you gotta keep up. My cousin Brandy started cheating on her wife with Nora's sister, Taylor. And that meant that Taylor was cheating on her boyfriend and they had three kids together also. And this all started happening the night of my nephew's birthday party. They literally did the nasty that day and then showed up at different times to play it off. Like they weren't doing anything. And nobody really found out about any of this until Thanksgiving of last year. But the drama is still going on till this day and it only gets worse. My cousin Brandy convinced Taylor to break it off with her boyfriend and completely leave her three children for her. Meanwhile, Brandy is still with her wife. Like for part two. Part two about how my crazy ass cousin broke up my family. So like I said, my cousin Brandy talked Taylor into leaving her boyfriend and her three kids for her. Meanwhile, Brandy didn't even leave her wife and she was planning on buying a house and adopting two out of the three kids that they have. But Taylor was low-key manipulated and low-key ignored every single red flag. So she did just that. She literally broke up her family for Brandy. And to this day, Brandy is still with her wife. And you would have thought that Taylor would have been like, okay, fuck this. But no, actually, instead, Taylor and Brandy decided that they were going to say that Taylor's boyfriend beat them both so he could get sent to jail and they could still do the nasty on the low. And then Brandy twisted the whole situation of what actually went on to make my family cut me, my brother, and my sister-in-law all off. So that way she didn't seem like the bad guy. And now I'm not allowed to see Brandy's daughter, who I'm really close with. Like she literally will track her location and if she's even near my house, she'll be grounded. So we've- Story time about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So a little background information. My sister and I were both 16 and in our sophomore year of high school. And yes, my sister and I were twins, but we were the complete opposite. She was a girly girl and I was a tomboy. But the summer before our sophomore year, we both got grounded because we were driving my dad's car without our license and we wrecked it. So we ended up spending all summer together, which was very unusual because it was like her and I were acquaintances living in the same house. 
Well, over that summer, we got super close and she ended up turning me into a girly girl. She taught me how to take care of my skin, do my hair, do my makeup, and how to dress. Now, mind you, once we got into high school, she never spoke to me because I wasn't a part of the little clique that she was in. So she was like, yay, you can finally hang out with my friends and I am super excited. So school starts, I end up becoming friends with all of her friends and my sister's really good friends with this one boy. But she had always said that she never liked him like that. So she introduced us, him and I started talking and we both ended up liking each other. Like for part two. Part two about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So like I said, my sister and I start school, I become friends with her friends, and she introduces me to this guy that she's been best friends with for a while. Him and I end up talking, I really like him, he really likes me. And my sister would always hype me up, she would be like, oh my god, you should get with him, he's a, such a nice guy, you guys would look so great together. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him, and of course I said yes, so I ran to my sister's room, I was so excited to tell her. So I knock on her door, I go in, and I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, he asked me out on a date, and she just sits there and stares at me. And when I ask her what's wrong, she's like, oh my god, you knew that I liked him. You're such a bad sister. I would have never done this to you. So then I started to feel bad, but then I didn't because I remembered how she used to hype me up. So the next day, a few hours before my date, she comes in my room. She's like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I acted yesterday. I would love to help you get ready for your date if you'll let me. I feel so bad. And we're sisters, so of course I get over it. And I tell her, yes, I want her to help me. Like for part three. Part three about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So like I said, she asked me if I want help getting ready. I say yes. And my family's super Italian, so we have thick, dark hair that grows in everywhere. Like I literally have a unibrow and the peach fuzz that's above my lips looks like a mustache. So my sister's like, hey, do you want me to wax your face? And I say yes. And she definitely wasn't over the situation and she wanted me to be in pain because I begged her to use this IPL device on me called you like which was basically at home laser hair removal but safer and it did not hurt at all so my sister hasn't had to deal with hair in literally months so i beg her to use you like on me and she's like no either you can let me wax you or you're going on this date with a mustache so of course i gave in to her waxing my face we go grab my mom's wax which has probably been sitting in her cupboard for literally six years my sister puts it in the microwave and then i lay down on the kitchen table and she goes to put the wax on me i already knew this was going to be painful as soon as the wax touched my skin i literally started screaming and she was like, stop being a baby, and she put more on me. I knock the container over, it gets all over me. When I get to the hospital, I figure out that I have third degree burns, and my sister did it on purpose. Story time about why I will never babysit ever again. So a little background information, I was 17 and a senior in high school. And my parents were super annoyed about the fact that I hadn't had a job since I was 14. So their friends just happened to need a babysitter. So they told me that I had to do it. So fast forward, I go over there super early in the morning and the mom had already left for work and the dad, who we're gonna call Will, he was just about to leave and before he walked out the door, he told me that there was a list of things that needed to be done before they got home. So their daughter Autumn, who was five years old, she was still sleeping and I was reading through the list and it was just normal stuff like nap time at two o'clock, no pop after seven o'clock, that sort of stuff. And then it had an arrow pointing towards the back. And when I flipped the page over, it said, By the way, Autumn is scared to bathe by herself, so please get a shower with her. And I was not comfortable with that, so I called my mom, and I told her about it, like for part two. Part two about why I will never ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I flipped the page over and it said that their daughter was scared to bathe alone so I would have to take a shower with her. And I called my mom and I told her about it. And she was like, well, honey, that doesn't sound that weird. Don't you remember when your little brother was scared of the toilet and we would have to take him to the bathroom and stand there with him for 20 minutes while he tried to go to the bathroom? So I was super annoyed that she was even comparing those two situations. Because first of all, that was my little brother. Second of all, this is just freaking weird. So I told her to bring my bathing suit over, and then I did everything on the list. Fast forward, Autumn said that she really liked me, so her parents wanted me to come over and babysit again. So I did, and whenever I was setting up the shower that day, there was a stack of towels sitting on the toilet. And when I picked it up to move it, a camera fell out of the pile of towels as soon as I picked it up. And it was recording. I was really weirded out, but I wanted to show it to my mom, so I... Part three about why I will never, ever, ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I picked up the stack of towels and a camera that was recording fell out of it. And while I was home later that night, I was waiting for my mom to get home when I got a call from Will. And if you don't remember who that is, that's Autumn's dad. And of course I wasn't going to answer the phone because I was super weirded out and low-key scared. But then he left a voicemail. And he was like, hey, so, um, I know you have the camera. And this is kind of awkward, but I'm going to need it back. I can pay you whatever you want. And I would prefer that we don't tell anybody about this. 
Sometimes I'm just really amazed at how stupid people are because as soon as my mom got home, I showed her the camera and I let her listen to the voicemail. So my mom called over Autumn's mom. So they called the police and Autumn's mom kept trying to call Will, but his phone was going straight to voicemail. And she was like, yeah, he begged me not to come over here whenever you called. It's been a week since this happened and Autumn's dad is currently running from the cops. Story time about how my best friend made my whole school hate me. So a little background information, I was 13 and in 8th grade, and so was my best friend who we are going to call Layla. And we met at a birthday party of a mutual friend during that summer. And all three of us started to hang out every day, and then when school started back up, the trio fell apart. Because our other friend Alice went to a different school, so she couldn't really hang out with us as much. When we first started school, there was this boy that I met, and I really liked him, and we started dating. But Layla and I had our own little friend group. There were five of us. Then there was this girl named Ivy. She had four people in her group. And our friend groups did not like each other at all. There was maybe one person from both groups that hung out with the other group. But that was it. And the only reason why none of us were friends was because the main girls, like the leaders of the group, used to be best friends. But then Ivy went behind Layla's back and started talking to this boy that Layla liked. And that's literally why they're not friends anymore. Well, all of us in the friend group were friends, but I was Layla's best friend. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend made my whole school hate me. So like I said, we were all friends in the group, but I was Layla's best friend. So her and I would pretty much boss everybody else around. But one day Layla tells one of our friends Nova to go and listen to what Ivy and her friends were talking about during lunch. Because Nova had friends who sat at the same lunch tables as them. Well, I guess Ivy was talking about how she was going to try to talk to every guy that Layla talked to just to make her mad. And that started a whole war. Layla and I have a sleepover that same night and she's like, we should make an Instagram account and expose her. Now, Ivy was notorious for sending out explicit pictures to guys. Like, even if she didn't know them, she loved the attention from guys. So Layla told me that we were going to make a fake Snapchat account and try to get her to send pictures. I'm not going to lie, it was kind of sad. She literally sent them within five minutes of Layla texting her pretending to be some guy. After that, we both made Instagram accounts that were named Exposing Ivy or something along those lines. And we made two accounts just so that way, if one got taken down, hopefully the other one would stay up. We posted the pictures on there and a lot of people saw them, like for part three. Part three about how my best friend made my entire school hate me. So like I said, Ivy sent the pictures and everybody saw them. And I'm talking even the people in high school. The next day, Ivy and Layla are in the same science class together. And none of their friends were there that day, so they ended up working on a group assignment together. And just like that, they were best friends again. Well, I get thrown under the bus, the teachers come and pull me out of my class, and they search my phone, and they find the Instagram account on my phone. Then when I told them it was also on Layla's phone, they went on her phone, and they didn't find anything, of course. I get suspended, and Layla and Ivy tell everybody that I was the one who made the fake Snapchat account and the Instagram accounts. And the whole week that I was suspended, I was getting messages from a lot of people that I went to school with and people that I didn't even know from high school. I was getting tagged and stuff on Instagram of people saying how much of a weirdo I am. Well, a few days into my suspension, Layla and Ivy talked my boyfriend into breaking up with me. They faked text messages between each other and made it look like I was talking to another guy. And then they faked another conversation between Layla and I. Like for part four. Part four about how my best friend made my entire school hate me. So like I said, Layla and Ivy talked my boyfriend into breaking up with me the week that I was suspended. They showed him fake text messages between me and some guy that doesn't even exist. And then they also faked a conversation between Layla and I, and it's me saying, OMG, this guy's so hot, I'm gonna leave my boyfriend for him. Then I was getting called a cheater, and when I went back to school the next week on Monday, it was terrible. People would whisper and laugh at me when I was walking in the hallway. I would be in the bathroom, and there would be girls talking about how weird and disgusting I was loud enough so I could hear them. Every lunch table that I sat at, Layla and Ivy would sit at the other end, with all their friends and just talk about me the entire time. Well, after this situation, I finally decided that I was going to do online school for the next two months and then hopefully have a fresh start in high school. All the girls and I were changing in the locker room and we went to gym class. Ivy asked if she could go to the bathroom, which of course was in the locker room. After gym class, I get changed in my clothes. And all the girls start laughing at me when my teacher says, there's a hole in the back of your pants. And yes, I did try telling my teachers about this stuff that was going on. As we all should know by now, schools are notorious for not doing shit to help students that are being bullied. Story time about how this girl and her boyfriend beat me up. So a little background information, I was in 11th grade and I was 17 years old. And in the summer, my friend and I went to go and watch fireworks for the 4th of July at this park. And most of the people there went to a completely different school. But we ended up meeting this group of guys and I was really vibing with the one guy who was there. He was super cute, super chill, and we got along great. And I just want to put this out there, I did not think to ask that he had a girlfriend because he was being super flirtatious. And just really wasn't acting like he had a girlfriend. I literally just hate how we have to ask people if they're in relationships now because they don't want to be honest or loyal. And then we look like the bad guys because they were dishonest. 
Anyway, so him and I start to hang out a lot and he really likes me. I really like him. And we went to this football game at his school and we ended up doing the nasty. After that, I'm in the bleachers with my friends and one of my friends tells me, yeah, he has a girlfriend. So she couldn't have told me this before we did the nasty. Anyways, like for part two. Part two about how this guy and his girlfriend literally beat me up. So like I said, him and I did the nasty at the football game and then I go onto the bleachers with my friends and she tells me that he has a girlfriend. But I'm not gonna lie, at this point, we had already been talking for two months and I really didn't care because I liked him and I wasn't just gonna turn my feelings off. First of all, I do not owe that girl any loyalty. And number two, we were already intimate with each other so I don't know what could make this situation worse than it already was. I mean, I did confront him about it and he told me that he was gonna break up with her for me. So I believed him. I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna wait for him to break it off with her and I'm still gonna talk to him. So eventually he literally made me wait for like two more months. So what did I do? I told his girlfriend everything. I'm not gonna lie, it's not even that I wanted to be a good person. It was literally just to spite him. It's like, yeah, your man wants to be with me. He don't want you. This is the text messages of him telling me that he was gonna break up with you. That day he called me and he was like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And I was shook that he did not bring up anything that I said to his girlfriend like for part three part three about how this girl and her boyfriend literally beat me up so like i said i told his girlfriend everything about how he didn't want her i sent her the receipts and everything and then she has the audacity to tell me i'm disgusting i'm this i'm that saying that i'm gross for even doing anything with him i should have known that he had a girlfriend i should have told him off like sis your man did not mention you once he didn't even mention you as an ex-girlfriend, so put the blame on him, not me. So later that day, he invites me over, and I am shook because I at least thought that he was going to bring it up and be like, why did you text my girlfriend? So I thought that maybe she was one of those girls where she's like, OMG, my man is never wrong. I'm not even going to confront him because I don't want him to break up with me, and it just wasn't his fault. So fast forward, I get to his house. I usually just walk in because I've been over there so many times. Well, as soon as I walk in the door, him and his girlfriend start wailing on me. I ended up with a few broken ribs, but I also ended up pregnant with his child. His family thinks that he should be with me since I'm having his kid. She decided to stay with him, so she comes to every prenatal appointment. Story time about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 14 and in 8th grade. And there was this boy that I really liked who lived like 10 minutes away from me. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to hang out. And my mom was strict about me not hanging out with people after 7 o'clock at night, especially a boy. I wasn't even allowed to hang out with boys. And my grandma, my mom, and my brother and I all lived together, and we all had our own rooms. Mine was on the first floor of the house, so I snuck out the window and I went and hung out with him. So I snuck out at around 3 and came back at around 4 a.m. And my grandma comes into my room to wake me up for school. And I guess that I had been laying on my side and my hair was like pulled up. Because literally all I remember waking up to is her smacking me up out of my sleep and screaming at me because there was a hickey on my neck. She's like, I'm telling your mom whenever she gets home, your window's gonna be screwed shut. And I keep telling her it's not a hickey, so she calls my brother over. And he's like, yeah, that's definitely a hickey because he likes to kiss her ass. Like for part two. Part two about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, she's like, I'm telling your mom and I keep telling her that it's not a hickey. And thankfully, Part three about how my grandma almost got me grounded. So like I said, I snuck in through the back door so that way my grandma wouldn't see me because if she saw me, she would have made me wait in the living room with her until my mom got home. So, you know, burnt myself with a curling iron and my mom gets home. And since I'm on the first floor, I can literally hear my grandma talking to my mom and my brother, of course. My grandma's like, yeah, she has hickeys all over her neck, which is literally an exaggeration because there was one, one small one. So my mom calls me out to the living room. I go out and she's like, all right, show it to me. And I'm like, show you what? She's like, don't play stupid. Your grandma already told me the whole situation. And I was like, mom, I literally burnt myself with a curling iron. And my grandma's like screaming and freaking out because I'm lying. She's like, you better tell your mother the truth right now. Da -da 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 -da. So I show the burn to my mom. She looks at my grandma and she's like, so you're going to tell me that's not a burn on her neck? 
and she was like that's not how it looked this morning blah 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 so i got away with it but now my grandma literally stalks me to see if i'm doing anything wrong so she can tell my mom story time about how my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend little background information i was 15 and in 10th grade and i have never had a boyfriend before any guy that i was sort of talking to we never made it out of the talking stage but fast forward i met this one guy who we're gonna call jake and because of how tragic my love life was i didn't expect us to get into a relationship but he ended up asking me to be his girlfriend so of course i said yes i was super excited that i had a boyfriend and then he met my family and my older sister and i were like super close so i told her all about him and she just couldn't wait to meet him Real quick, I just want to give a big shout out to Lumino for sponsoring today's video. Lumino Whitening Kit is one of the best ways to whiten your teeth without paying hundreds of dollars, especially if you have sensitive teeth, this is the next best thing. Although I have veneers, they only cover the front of my teeth, so my teeth can still be very sensitive to certain chemicals that other brands use in their products. If you guys want to go check out their 7-pack for under $15, the link is in my bio. So whenever he met my sister, she was being super talkative to him, and I thought it was just because she was excited to meet him, like for part 2. Part 2 about how I found out my sister was hooking up with my boyfriend. So like I said, he came over, he met my sister, they got along super well. Fast forward, my parents decided to have a family gathering and my sister was like begging me to invite my boyfriend. Which I didn't plan on inviting him at all because my family is super annoying and would make a big deal about the fact that this is my first boyfriend. She was like, okay, but if you guys are seriously in a relationship, I think that he should meet your family. So I ended up inviting him. So my mom called me to the kitchen to help pass out drinks, which was super annoying because my sister was literally doing fucking nothing. So after I'm done with that, I'm looking for my boyfriend and he's nowhere to be found. So I go upstairs and as I'm about to walk up the stairs, both of them come down. And when I asked what was wrong, like why they were upstairs together, she was like, oh, I was showing him to the bathroom. Which I felt super weird about, but because she was my sister, I let it go. Because you're supposed to trust your family. Stuff. Part 3 about how my sister got with my boyfriend. So things started to get really sus because every time that he would come over, they would always find a way to be alone with each other. So fast forward, my sister and I are supposed to go to one of her friend's parties. The whole time though, she kept asking me if I would invite my boyfriend. And no offense, I love my boyfriend, but I need space away from him sometimes. And not to mention, I felt like I was dragging him around like a dog. Because she was the one who would want me to invite him everywhere. Fast forward, I end up inviting him to the party. My sister gets super drunk, really sick. And my boyfriend offers to take her to the bathroom. And I was like, excuse me, I'm her sister. I can do that. Thank you very much. So after I say that, my sister looks at me and she was like, I would appreciate it if you would just stop being like this because I feel super sick right now. Like, okay, play the victim. Anyway, so I go to check on them in the bathroom. They're not in there. And one of the bedroom doors was open. So when I went in there, I saw them doing the nasty. I asked her how long this had been going on and she said it was since the first time that they met. And now I'm ignoring my sister until she goes to college. Story time about how my mom made me shave my hair off. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in 7th grade. And I had just moved to a new school this year because my grandma was really sick and my family and I needed to take care of her. And for like the first two months, I had a big problem making friends. Until I met my best friends, Ashley and Nicole. Ashley was super sweet and Nicole was kind of a bitch. And I was in between, so we kind of all balanced each other out. But fast forward to later on in the year, we met this one girl named Kelly. And I'm not gonna lie, she was super nice, but really annoying. She would always try to talk to us, always try to hang out with us. She was literally stuck up our asses 24-7. And the one day Ashley convinced Nicole and I to have a sleepover with Kelly and her. So we say yes, and Nicole, Ashley, and I are all texting in the group chat. Nicole goes, well, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to be nice to her. And she actually said that we were going to play a prank on her. And that's when Ashley bailed because she didn't want to be a part of it. Like for part two. Part two about why my mom made me shave my hair off. So like I said, Ashley bailed because she did not want to be a part of Nicole's evil plan to bully this girl. So fast forward, Nicole and I go over to Kelly's house and I start to feel really bad because Kelly's actually super nice and she wasn't as weird as I thought she was. Fast forward, Kelly's sleeping and Nicole comes over to me and she's like, hey, come to the bathroom with me. So I get up and I go to the bathroom and Nicole pulls out Nair. And I asked her what the hell she's going to do with that. And she was like, oh, I've seen some people do pranks on YouTube. You know, they put it in somebody's shampoo bottle and then it makes them lose their hair. So since I'm the only one who thinks logically, I'm like, Nicole, you cannot fucking do that. And she's like, oh, don't be such a baby. This shit doesn't even work anyways. All the videos that I watched, people only lost like four strands of hair, which made no sense because why the fuck were we going to do it then? Anyways, fast forward. I go to sleep. I wake up in the morning and my mom comes to get me. Like for part three. 
Part three about why my mom made me shave my hair off. So like I said, Nicole put the nair in her shampoo and I went to sleep. I decided I was not going to be a part of this little plan. And I wake up in the morning. My mom comes and picks me up. And Ashley's texting me saying, hey, was Nicole nice to Kelly? And I told her about what she did. And Ashley was like, oh my god, that's so fucked up. Like, I'm going to tell Kelly... And I was like, yeah, I was going to tell her, but I don't want to get Nicole in trouble. So fast forward to dinner time, my mom gets a call from Kelly's mom. And she was like, Kelly took a shower earlier. She's losing her hair. And Nicole texted Kelly saying that your daughter's the one who put the shit in my daughter's shampoo. So my mom's like, well, how do you know it was my daughter? And she was like, Nicole also said that she saw the nair bottle in your daughter's backpack. So my mom runs up to my room. She finds the nair bottle in my stuff which obviously Nicole put there. But my mom wouldn't listen to me, so eventually she sat me down in the kitchen and shaved my hair. Story time about how I got my ex, toxic best friend, jumped. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. And like any of these toxic best friend story times, she was super jealous of me for literally no reason. She would literally try to be better than me in everything. Like when I did a sport or a club, she would join immediately right after. And it wasn't a, oh, I'm going to join my best friend. No, it was, I'm going to join so that way I can show her that I'm better than her. For example, in sixth grade, I was captain on the volleyball team and she decided that she was going to try out her sophomore year. She played it off as if she just wanted to try it out, but then I got announced captain and she was pissed off when she heard that. She literally blocked me on everything. And she came from a super wealthy family, so she was used to getting whatever she wanted. And my whole friend group would literally tell me, you need to stop being friends with her. She's toxic. She's this. She's that. The only thing that stopped me from being friends with her was the blackmail. Like for part two about how I got my toxic ex-best friend jumped. So like I said, the only thing that was stopping me from not being her friend was the blackmail that she had. Every time that I pissed her off or even just randomly, she would be like, oh, I'm going to send this out. I'm going to expose you. She was just overall a shitty friend. So I had an exposing account on Instagram where I would expose people in my class. It got banned, but she DM'd the account, the blackmail. Little did she know, it was literally me who was running it. Obviously, I didn't post it, but I showed one of my friends. And we kind of made a plan to get rid of the blackmail. So my birthday was coming up, and I was going to Disney. And my mom said that I could invite two friends. Originally, I wasn't going to invite Tessa. But since I had this plan, I invited her and one of my other friends. On the third night, my friend and I decided to take our plan into action. Tessa was sleeping, so I went on her phone and I went and deleted all the pictures. Life for part three. Part three about how I got my toxic ex press friend jumped. So like I said, on the third night, she was sleeping, so we went on her phone. I deleted all of the blackmail that she had on me. And I even went a step further and screenshotted all of the nudes that she was sending back and forth with older guys. And these guys were way older than her, like way older. And I sent them to myself and deleted the text off of her phone. Fast forward, we drop her off at her house. I stay over my friend's house and we decide that we're going to post everything to my exposing page. And we also came up with a really good idea. Why not send this to Tessa's parents? So we sent them to her parents. And guys, when I tell you this exposing page had so many people on it, it really did. Somebody was like, OMG, like, please send a face reveal. Like, I won't tell anybody. So what did I do? I sent a picture of Tessa and that person posted it to their Snapchat story. Fast forward to the first day of school. We're outside for gym class and three girls beat her Story time, I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school. And I know you guys are probably thinking, how the fuck didn't you know that you were dating your best friend's brother? And we're going to call my best friend Rima and we're going to call her brother Alex. So I had met Alex whenever I was in fifth grade. We never hung out outside of school. We were more of just like friends in school. But I only met Rima last year. Also, Alex was a year older than us. Well, one of the art teachers who usually taught the senior class, she just gave birth to her baby, so they decided to mix both of our classes, aka the one that Alex was in. Well, my art teacher decided to pair us all into partners and have us do an art project. So I got paired up with Alex. Fast forward, we end up liking each other, and we start dating. And usually whenever Rima and I hung out, we would always hang out over my house. Because she said her family was annoying. And Alex and I would only hang out during school. Like for part two. 
Part two about how I didn't know that I was dating my best friend's brother. So like I said, we always hung out at my house because she never wanted to hang out at hers. But this weekend, her whole family was supposed to be gone, so she wanted to throw a party. And she was like, OMG, you should definitely invite that guy that you like. Now listen, I know you guys think it's weird that she probably didn't even know that I had a boyfriend. Whenever I had talked to people that were best friends with her before, and yes, multiple best friends. This girl went through best friends like she goes through underwear. They had all said to not let her know who you like or who you're dating. Because she would either try to get with them or she would get with them. And if she couldn't get with them, she would just send them nudes out of nowhere. So fast forward, I get to the party. She comes up to me. She's like, I'm so fucking annoyed. My brother's here. And then she was like, oh, did you bring the guy that you like? And I was like, no. And then I walk into the living room and I see my boyfriend. So I go over and I give him a hug and a kiss and Rima starts screaming at me. After that, she told her brother that I bullied her so that way he would break up with me. And he did. Story time about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my God, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information, I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school and I had this best friend who we're gonna call Madison. Now I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near, but we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies. But my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad. And it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it. And then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off. Like for part 2. Part 2 about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything, it was just a light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this. Story time about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So a little background information. I was 16 and it was during the summertime. And I was super excited because I had just got my license. But my parents had this idea that if they made me drive around and do all their errands, that I would be a better driver. So I was pretty much like their B-I-T-C-H. Anyway, so the one night my mom wanted to make this recipe that she saw on TikTok. And she didn't have the right seasonings for it, so who did she tell to go to the store? Yours truly, me. And on Sundays, the mini market that was in our town would close at 4 o'clock. So I had to drive like 30 minutes away to the nearest Target. And when I got there, I had to park in the back. Because they had like 10 handicap spaces up front. Another 10 for when you sit there and they bring your shit out to you. And another 5 whenever you're picking something up that you already ordered. But in all honesty, that didn't bother me because I had never heard about any girls getting trafficked at a grocery store. Like for part 2. Part 2 about how I almost got kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, I parked all the way in the back of the parking lot. I mean, okay, not all the way in the back, but I was damn near close. So I go in and I'm not too familiar with this Target. I've only been here a few times because the mini market in my hometown is usually the one that I go to. So I'm looking around and I realize that there's this little girl following me. But it seemed like she was more like keeping an eye on me. Like she would stand like 20 feet behind me, but just like stare at me, you know, peek through the aisles. And she had did that for like 10 minutes. But whenever I finally went up to the checkout, she was gone and this woman came up to me. She was like, oh my gosh, have you seen my daughter? She was running around the store. I don't know where she is. So I described the little girl to her that I saw. And she was like, yeah, that's her. I can't find her. Will you please help me look for her? And I didn't have the time for this because my parents were going to wring my neck. But I said, 
Part three about how I was almost kidnapped at a grocery store. So like I said, she asked me to help look for her daughter and I was like, I'm gonna go tell a Target employee. And she was like, no, don't worry. They're all already looking. They have security all over the place. And she was like, will you help me check the parking lot? Because I don't know if she left. She was like, I've been having them look for the past 10 minutes. So I didn't think anything of this because I didn't think that some lady would try to kidnap me. So I went into the parking lot with her and I'm like, okay, where do you think she would have went? Like, did you drive here? Did she maybe go to the car? And she was like, no, we live like five minutes down the road. Do you think that we could get in your car and drive around? And I said, yeah, because I thought that it would speed up the process. And my dad's truck was really high off the ground. So while we're walking, I'm like, I think someone's under my car. And she was like, what? No, 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 no. It's probably just the shadow. And I'm like, no, there's someone under my car. So I turn around to walk back into the store and she starts like pulling my arm towards my car. So an employee called the police whenever I went in there. And long story short, they were trying to kidnap me. Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information. I was 12 years old and I was in sixth grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past four years. And finally, when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean, probably because there were like eight people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, four kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him like for part two part two about my extremely creepy neighbors so like i said my mom and i took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door he had a bunch of bruises all over his body the dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces and all you could hear was him screaming at his son so my mom and i went to walk away before the door opened and he was like sorry my son knows better than to open the door to strangers so he took the brownies and then i asked him if i could have a sleepover with one of his daughters and he was super hesitant at first but he said that i could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body so that night when she came over to sleep over my house i asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs but after that we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day i knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone like for part three part three about my super creepy neighbors so like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom, so probably never. Which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from. So my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later, my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost. But he ran inside, called 911 because i was so young the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that i was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings but then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents they were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born story time i became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me so a little background information i was 22 and working at hooters and i had this one regular who literally came in every single day that i worked I mean, it wasn't really creepy because I did give him my schedule because he tipped really well. But that's besides the point. The one night he asked me out and obviously I knew that he was going to pay for our dinner. So I said yes because I was hungry and I did not want to pay for food. So anyways, I go on this date and I actually end up really liking him just to find out that he is 40 years old. Fast forward a few months, we start dating and he realizes that I still live at home with my mom and dad. So he's like, oh, like, you can move in with me, but first you need to meet my kids. And I, like, thought that his kids were going to be, like, two and three years old. No, when I went over to dinner the one night at their house, there were four kids who were literally all above the age 13. And every single one of the girls gave me a death stare as I sat down in my chair, like for part two.
Part two about how I became a stepmom at 22 and my stepkids hate me. So like I said, we're all sitting down in the dining room and there's four kids. There's one boy, three girls. The one boy is 14 and all the other girls are 15, 16, and 19. And we're going to call my boyfriend James. James is like, okay, well, I'm going to go back to the kitchen and finish cooking. You guys should bond a little bit. So he leaves me alone with these little fucking roaches and they just start firing shots at me. They're like, you're a gold digger, aren't you? Don't worry, my dad will never marry you, so you're not going to get any of his money. So after that, I told James that they need to warm up to me a little bit more before I move in. So for the next month, we would try to plan things with the kids. But anytime that I was going to be there, every single one of them would be like, we're not going, we hate her. Eventually, James just kind of said, fuck it, and he asked me to marry him. So I moved in, and then a week later, we got married. His kids didn't show up to the wedding, and James had to go on a work trip. So I was moving some of my stuff into the house from the car, and the kids fucking locked me out of the house. This has all been within the span of five months. What should I do? Story time about how my sister sold my nudes. Yes, my own sister. So a little background information, I was in 12th grade and I was pretty popular. And my sister, on the other hand, she was in 9th grade. I'm not even saying this to boost my ego, but she was jealous of me and everybody could tell. Only because of the fact that she didn't have her high school glow up, you know, she low-key still looked like a 6th grader. And there were very few guys who gave her attention, and some of the guys would even tell her that I was hotter than her. So that did not help the situation at all. Not like I even paid attention to any of these guys because I had a boyfriend. And my sister and I still shared a room even though our brothers got their own rooms. So she could literally go through my shit anytime she wanted. Well, since we shared a room and I never thought that she would sell my nudes, times I would take these exposing pictures of myself while she was in the room. Well, she had this one friend named Jessica who also was weirdly obsessed with me. One night she was saying how funny it would be to sell someone's nudes like- Part two about how my sister sold my nudes. So like I said, my sister had this friend, and the one night they were talking about how funny it would be to sell somebody's pics. We all laughed, joked about it, the conversation was over and done with, I thought that was it. Like in all honesty, I thought it was one of those things where you guys make plans to do something, and then after the conversation you never talk about it again, and you never actually do what you said you were going to do because it was so out of pocket. So my sister's friend slept over that night, and I woke up, went to school earlier because I have volunteer work to do, so my sister usually just takes the bus. Well, I accidentally left my computer at school, so I called my sister, asked her if she could grab it and bring it into school. Now, my computer is connected to my phone. Well, I guess they decided to be little creeps, and they went on my computer, and they found my pictures, and they sent them to themselves. And since my phone and computer are hooked up, I was able to see that they sent the pictures to themselves. So I start blowing up her phone, but by first period, I had a bunch of people telling me that they were about to buy my pictures. My sister literally made an ad and put it on Snapchat. My boyfriend... Story time about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So a little background information. I was 13 and in 8th grade. And my best friends and I were super excited because we'd never been Black Friday shopping before. So we had a plan that all of us would spend the night at my house and my mom would drive us to the mall at 4 in the morning. So fast forward, it's 4 in the morning and my friends and I are ready to go to the mall and my mom came with us but we didn't stay with her the whole time. So as we were walking to the first store, we realized that there were these three guys behind us that have kind of been following us around since we got into the mall. But we just think it's a coincidence because you know it's Black Friday, the mall is packed. There are obviously going to be people going the same exact way as us. So we go into the first store, we get what we want to get, and the men didn't follow us in there. But as we're making our way to the next store, we realize that they're following us again. It was like they waited outside the first store for us to come out. So then we decided that we were going to walk around one of the kiosks a few times to see if they were really following us. And of course they were, so we went into another store and they didn't follow us in that one either. So I go up to one of the workers and I ask if they could possibly like call security or something. Because there are these guys following us and she said, yeah, like for part two. Part two about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, my friends and I go into the one store and of course they don't follow us in there. So we ask an employee if they can call security. So whenever security got there, I told them that these guys have been following us around since we got into the mall. And then security's like, well, where's your mother? Acting like it was our fault that we could be kidnapped for not being with my mom. So after that, he's like, all right, just go find your mom, you know, I'll talk to them. So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, where are you? Of course, she's on the whole other side of the mall. So my friends and I are going to meet her on the other side of the mall. And we look back to see if the security guard was talking to them. And literally, the security guard just walked out of the store and went the complete opposite way. So then we walk up to the security guard and we're like, you didn't even talk to him. And then he turns around, rolls his eyes, goes over and starts talking to these guys. And then we continue to the store that my mom was at whenever we decide to stop at Starbucks to get something to drink. So after 10 minutes of waiting in line, you know, we turn around and we see these guys standing at the end of the line just staring at us. So we get out of line and we decide to just go straight to the store that my mom was at. And when we got there, we told her what was going on. So she was like, okay, let me get these few things and then we can leave. Like for part three.
Part three about why I will never ever go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, we got out of line and we went straight to the store that my mom was at and she was like, okay, just let me get these few things and then we can leave. So we start walking towards the exit and then I'm like, mom, they're still following us. So she turns around and she realizes they're literally standing two feet behind us. So we decided to go into one of the stores and we asked one of the employees if they could also call the head of security. And whenever head of security got there, she literally tore them a new you know what. After that, my mom tries to go and point out the guys and they're not standing there anymore. So they're like, well, what do you want us to do? And then my mom's like, well, you can walk us out to our car. So they walk us out to our car and then they stand there while we're getting in. My mom starts the car and she starts backing up and we literally run over something. And all of a sudden we hear like screaming and moaning and the security guards look under the car and literally one of the guys who was following us is literally laying under our cars with a knife. And as soon as that happened, there was literally a van parked right across from our car. The van drove away really fast, but the police ended up catching up to it and they found like eight girls in that van. Story time. Everybody's saying that I cheated on my ex-boyfriend, but I want your guys' opinion. So a little background information. I was a college student and I had been with this guy who we're going to call Jacob for about six months. Towards the end of his and I's relationship, stuff just started to get really boring and every day I would get the ick from him. Now at this time also, I had gotten a new job. While I was working, I had met this guy who we're going to call Tim. Since I was a college student, I decided to start working more, so Tim and I would see each other literally every day. Him and I really hit it off, like straight away. Not to mention, him and I had a lot of things in common, his sense of humor was great. Well, the one night before work got out, Tim asked for my number, and I said yes. However, since I was still with Jacob, I decided that I was going to break up with him before I texted Tim. So, I broke up with him. Fast forward to now, Tim and I are in a super good relationship. But now everyone's saying that I cheated on Jacob. What do you guys think? Story time. Karma didn't do its job fast enough, so I had to take matters into my own hands. So a little background information. My best friend Ellie had just passed away in a car crash. And for some reason, these two girls, Jackie and Jayla, decided that they were going to talk shit on her all the time for no reason. Like they had some weird, unhealthy obsession with her for no reason. Like the one time they literally put me in a group chat just so that way I could see them talking shit about her. So I told my best friends Christy and Megan about it and we decided to come up with a plan to jump them. So in the morning and after school, Jayla and Jackie would walk by my house to get to theirs. So obviously we weren't going to do it in the morning because nobody had the energy for that. But we got baseball bats and everything else and we did end up using them. Like we ran up on them after school and we started to beat the sh out of them. I don't want this video to get taken down so use your imagination because it was pretty bad. And both of them ended up in the ER. One girl was in a coma for the week and the other one had a broken collarbone. They ended up pressing charges but my thing is this is a girl who can't defend herself so I would have done it